I cannot have upbeat music in the car because I drive too fast. <laughs> Who are you picking 11? I think Prince could go. I think MJ will have to go in oh, there. Once you came to the flat and I put the tunes on, it was you over. Wonder. Oh, it's over. Can you sing? Can you dance? <laughs> that ain't for here, that's for there. Not only are we delighted at Legends of Football to have two such stellar icons of the game, <laughs> but also what is incredible is that you two are actually friends. You've got a relationship as well. She's a friend, I love her. You're kidding? Like, come on. <laughs> I, love, I, I adore her. I think we'd have been mates at school. Yeah. Definitely. Really good. If we mates went at to school. school, we would have been up yeah. to no good. I'm certain well, of it. Why do you think you get on so well? Oh, that's a good question. It's, it's very good. I don't know. I just I remember we when we first met. At, we met in um, I think it was Amsterdam, wasn't it? We was at a bar after the yeah. the, 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 the Holland. Glad you remember. Yeah, and because that's how much you mean to me. Yes, I, I remember know. it. But like the thing is, is that from from then we just I just knew I liked her. My spirit took to her. Just easy, easy mm. going, easy relationship. She knows stuff. He knows stuff. She she knows more stuff. Remember when we remember when we was getting ready to do the um <laughs> he was getting ready to do the COCOM and <laughs> you was really scared because you didn't think he was gonna get a tactical angle of it and you was really nervous and then you, when you got the tactical angle you just went, Oh, that's much better now. Yeah, well listen, that I mean, as much as you remember that, I just remember I didn't know which camera was <laughs> what on. And I just remember watching it back and being like <laughs> right. figure it out. No, Another it was... world. Another world. Also as well, I think there's probably uh, a mutual respect as well for what both have achieved in the game, that'd be right? Without a doubt, yeah. Yeah, he actually, I, I've, I've never told him this story. He doesn't know this. When I was a kid playing at Arsenal, I'll never forget the day when we were at the JVC centre and he came up to us, it was me and a couple of my mates, and he gave us a bag of his boots, the kangaroo uppers, yeah. all the nice levers, had all the posh boots, you know, for us inner city kids. And I remember he gave us this, these boots. Of course, none of us could wear them because <laughs> they were too big. <laughs> I think we flogged them around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the other thing as well. Had things panned out differently, because you were at Arsenal mm. as a kid, mm. you could have been an Arsenal icon as well instead of a Chelsea icon. Ooh, yeah, I mean, I grew up watching Arsenal a lot. I stood on the terraces all the time. Um, where our seats were was effectively... So you are an Arsenal fan? No. No, she's not. Absolutely not an Arsenal fan. I have huge respect for them. Were. I said were. Did you grow up as an Arsenal no, fan? No, I did not grow up an you Arsenal fan. You just wanted to watch football? I didn't have a choice. It was up the road. It was the place we went to go and play, train at the JVC Centre, run the, run the stands. Yeah. The West Stand, we used to go up and down and do horseshoes around the pitch. And then on, on game day, we used to stand underneath the George Graham days. And mm. of course, when the ball was up in the air, from where we were stood, you could never see where the ball was. And we used to have a lot of competition about where it would land. <laughs> yeah. But even in the early days, you've always taken interest in women's football, haven't you? Yeah, I remember, yeah, right from the off. Because I used to see a lot of the girls were in and, out, in and around Jean upstairs, the laundry lady, remember her? Yeah, I remember. And um, used to see them all the time. Vic Ackers, obviously, you know, he used to, he used to they used to be, they used to train in the JVC yeah. building. So every now and then you'd go in and see them, but. You know what I mean? It was um, it was something that it was it was very normal to me. I remember like way back. Obviously, I knew Hope Powell. Like there was a, another player, another girl player. Her name was Brenda Sempari. Yeah, great right? I'm sure I used to go out with her sister for a while, and obviously Marianne Spacey. And so I knew them when they were playing for Fulham, and that was way back. It was like 80s, man. So when I went to Arsenal, Arsenal had a real proper interest in it, and so you just you just you're just yeah. amongst it. It was never a problem for me. We used to play. I remember when I was younger, at my school tournament, two of the best players was Hillman and Valerie Parchment. They were, they were brilliant, they were. Great footballers. Didn't have nowhere to play. Well, thankfully, we've moved on an awful lot, yeah, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you talk about those times, and when you know, your career was cut short by injury, you felt you didn't have any choice but to go to America to, yeah. to, rip, you know, to get your badges and to become Established, I don't know, respect, you, you tell me. But it, looking back, it's, although there's still a long way to go with women's mm. football uh, in many, many ways, 
it is a different world now to what it was. Yeah, completely. If I think about being 18 in London, I didn't really know what I was going to do with my life. Going to university, I think, at least gave me the opportunity to get an education, which I never actually thought I was going to get. But from there, then getting the opportunity to go and live abroad and coach a game I loved. Didn't really know what, how that would pan out. I just went, to be honest with you, I went to have a good time at 21 and try and learn what it was like to live in and around New York City and coach kids of all ages. Would you have gone if you had the same opportunities here? I've often thought about that and I've often thought would an Emma Hayes get the mm. same chances I was afforded in 2012 and I don't think mm. they will. So I think it, however, that grounding in the US, I think when I look even across our league, when I see mm. the likes of Mark Skinner, yeah. how much America's helped him, whether that's the setback pieces or the building teams, mm. I'm sure it will help Casey Stoney. I think travelling is important. But you, you had serious injuries in mm. your career. But what was that like for you though, when you had an injury, yeah. which you, and you... I'm still, I'm still having to live with it. That's uh, uh, last week. I need another injection. I'm still having to live with something. And I remember at the time, it was a player you played with, Paul Linderson. Paul Linderson, yeah. We, I him and I had the same yeah. injury. We had the same injury and he retired. It was exactly the same time. We saw the same surgeon at the same time. And it was at a time, whereas if I was to get the injury now, it wouldn't be an issue. No. But back then, doing microfractures yeah. and things like that was really challenging because playing without a cartilage is, is difficult. Now it's just about, I just need to be able to do my job. That must have been one of your lowest points in your football life, yeah. when somebody says to you, I'm sorry, you can't play, you can't play yeah. again. Yeah, especially when my sister and I had this conversation the other day, because she said, I wish we'd have grown up doing more homework. And I said, why? Why? And she said, well, because I just felt like she lacked confidence from that. And I said, look at all the great play we had. We were constantly out in the flats. We were playing football from the end of school till 10 o'clock, at least in the summer, when the sun went down. I, I wouldn't want to change my childhood. But when something's taken away from you and you've, you, no matter, it doesn't matter whatever level people play, when something is, is your passion and it was taken away, taken yeah. away. It de I definitely had a dodgy spell for a couple of years and thankfully, thankfully I found my feet to be honest with you because I didn't realise how traumatised I was about it until years later. Mm. Um, but, I, but I'm still able to work in the profession and for me that's the... And some. Yeah. Yeah, no, listen, I, I, I haven't worked a day in my life. I promise you, I have not worked a day in my life. I love what I do. I love my if job. You, that's what they say. If you love what you do, yeah. you're going to work Make a living, life. yeah. Make a living. You, your upbringing was not dissimilar, was it? But like, I, I, what you're saying, what Becky said about wish you paid more, I wish I paid more attention at school some of the time. Especially once you get into situations where you have to be amongst people and you have to try and converse and speak properly. I used to f be so, like, my, so insecure being in that situation. And then it's funny because when I started doing the punditry stuff and then people say you can't string a sentence together, what's he on about? Those things used to really affect me. And I think that what I done by the time I got, when I got into the football, because it was the way I expressed myself and the way my persona was, it kind of hid all that. Because I remember the teacher used to say to me, it doesn't matter what you do when you get older, you'll regret not paying attention. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and he's right. Mr. Curzon said that to me. And he was right, because even when I was flying, doing my great stuff, I was still thinking, I wish I paid more attention. So then what I do is just try to upscale myself, read stuff and just, just, ex just experience more. Yeah. Mm. You know, because like there was a time where, that like, period you're talking about, when, I, where, where Emma was injured or where, I went for a, a period from, I'd say from 14, 14 to 19, where I didn't even know what I was doing. Mm. Nothing, I didn't know what was going on with me because I didn't have no direction and no nothing. And it was in those years when I used to think so much about Mr. Curzon, to the point I was thinking about him nearly on a daily basis. You know what I mean? I was lucky I had a teacher that sat me in front of a, a typewriter mm. back in the day. And she asked me to type something at speed in one minute and I couldn't do it. And she said, that's what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. You're going to be do that if you don't get your head down. 
And I said, well, I'm not very good at this and I don't want to do it. Mm. She said, well, you better change quickly. <laughs> and it was a wake up for me. And How I did old was it. you? 15, because what what, what? I was scraping then to try and get past my GCSEs, which I did enough. And then enough to do my A-levels and enough to get wow. into university. You've done all them? I scraped it. But, but both of you there, the way you've come through is your, your character, your personality that, that you're blessed with has played an enormous, played an enormous part in your success. Mm. And, it's, and it's easy to downplay that. There'll be people, say for instance, in your scenario, who, have, who did pay attention, have much more education, but don't necessarily have the will. Not just the athleticism and the, the natural gift you had uh. as a footballer. And there are, there'll be other people as well who maybe have more education, even more than you, although you went to university. They don't have your leadership qualities. No. So I, I think you can be, you can be educating things other than academia as such. But what I want to test now mm. is mm. you're big mates. There's no disguise in that, is it? Yeah. There, none at all. I just want to check how aligned you are. Okay, uh, Rio? Mm. A and B. Right. A in your left hand, B in your right hand. This is one or the other, right? And so we just hold it up, whichever yeah. one we think. All right, so A is whatever the first thing is, and B is the second right. thing, okay? Yeah. Easy. Fry up or roast dinner? <laughs> Club or country? Elvis or Prince? <gasps> Cats or dogs? I don't like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> she, she likes I don't like cats or dogs. Beth Mead or Sam Kerr? Wow. No, I'm not answering that. Got Lois. I can't answer that. Can't Jesus, Sorry. Sam's amazing, but I love Beth. I'm not going against Beth here. Learn the guitar or the piano? So then we can be in a group together then, otherwise, be, you know what I mean? We'd be cracking. We'd be amazing. Can we sing as well? Yeah, we'd probably... That, that's a little hard. Don't, see, what did you say that for? Dinah Ross or Aretha Franklin? Oh, oh that's tough. Wow. Aretha. Yeah. I'd be amazed if you agree on this. Scoring goals or keeping clean sheets? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't win without coach. both. Yeah. Can't win without both. No, I've got scoring goals. You're scoring Score goals. one more than the opponent yeah, you win the game. Thank right? you very much, Ems. Indian or Chinese? Thai. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably got Upset India. the tummy, sorry. Pubs or clubs? Which age? Mm, yeah, as soon as you've got for an age in there. I'll probably go pubs. I'll go pub now. VAR or no VAR? VAR. VAR. Rom-com or thriller? <gasps> Stormzy or Little Sims? <gasps> oh. I like both of them. Both, to be honest. You can't separate them. That's a horrible question, yeah, tough. isn't it? Really tough. Look, you're like two centre-halves that are a really good partnership. We're trying to get in between you and mess you around. Can't get in between Pull us. one out. You can't get between us. <laughs> Messi or Ronaldo? Only because of the World Cup this year. <laughs> <laughs> Old school or new releases? Rock or reggae? Yeah. I'm from yeah, Camden. I'm, I'm pro, yeah. Just both. I probably, I probably have to. I probably have to go. No, I'll go, I'll go with both. I got both. Quiet night in or big night out? Instagram or Twitter? None of them. They both get on my nerves. But if I had to choose one, it probably would be Instagram. Beatles or the Stones? <gasps> oh, come on. Can't do that. That's can't just like that. making trouble, you can't, isn't it? Just, you can't do that. Yeah, let's do a both can't of them. Separate. You can, you can't I mean, they're two different clubs. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right, the last, one's really, the last one's a really easy one. Go on then. Arsenal or Chelsea? <laughs> 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 really easy. Yeah. Look, we're delighted that you're joining us on the 2nd of October to celebrate your careers in football with a night of music and football. So I want to talk a bit about how much music means to you and how big a part of your life it's been as well. But also I want to tell you a little bit about Nordoff Robbins. Mm. Before we spoke, were you even aware of Nordoff Robbins at all and yeah. their work? Yeah. What, what, what did you know? I just knew through, through Mervyn, who obviously we know about what they do and how through music how it can it helps people you know in respects of the 
the understanding and to them to communicate, all that sort of stuff. Once he told me about it, you realise what it was about. I mean, it, it's an incredible thing now. It's about 40 years ago the first mm. centre started. Paul Nordoff and Clive Robbins, the mm. two gentlemen who started it. And it basically, it helps, it's music therapy helps mm. people with a, a whole wide range of conditions, dementia, autism, people recovering from serious operations. Um, for, instance, you're, you're, for instance, you'll see somebody who's got dementia, really not sure, unfortunately, of their whereabouts, their identities or anything like that, and they're now in their own little world. Mm. You could put on one of their favourite tracks, yeah. they'll sing it note for note, right. they'll sing it word for word. Yeah. Somebody with a condition, perhaps a child with autism is mm. often the case, they don't communicate at all. There's no eye contact, no, and so as a parent, that's really, really of difficult. Is, yeah. And then that's how they discovered this, that there was a child who, no communication with the outside whatsoever, just idly tapped a rhythm. You know, like you sat at a table, you tap a rhythm with a spoon or something like that. Child picked up a spoon, tapped a rhythm mm. back. And that was the start of everything. Wow. So the whole involvement of music as a therapy has been an incredible success. Where we've tried to help, what we've brought to the party is, we've brought the world of football yeah. to Nordoff Robbins. So we've been going now for 23, 24 years. Yeah. Um, you follow in the footsteps, the likes of right from the very early days, Stanley Matthews, John Charles, Brian Clough, Sir Bobby Robson, Sir Alex Ferguson, oh. Eric Cantona, uh, Alan Shearer, uh, Ryan Giggs, Teddy Sheringham, Jose Mourinho, David Beckham, Arsene Wenger, Stephen Gerrard, Frank Lampard, and we would have had our first female uh, legend three years ago, but we went to COVID, so we were dark mm. for three years, no event. So we were delighted last year, first inductee into our Hall of Fame, Gareth Southgate alongside Ellen White. So those are the steps you're following in, and we're very, very proud to have you. Are you looking forward to the night? Yeah, I'm quite nervous about it, Mike. That's what are you nervous about? Pleased. Well, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know, because like um, growing up and that, the accolades and getting um, recognised, never, it never happened for me. Even through my football career, I didn't really get recognised like for what I, what I done. You know, people liked what I do, but like everybody was harping on the negative of me. So you just feel like you'd never got the recognition for what, you'd, for what you've done and how hard it was for me to get there and do it. So now all of a sudden you're starting to get stuff and it makes me feel very like, wow, nervous. And, and strange yeah. because I'm not used to that. So to be recognised, obviously I'm very pleased, very honoured in that. And when, when they said I'm getting recognised alongside Emma, I thought, yeah, that's cool. I, yeah, listen, I, I agree with you. I could probably speak for both of us. There's lots <coughs> of what we do that we love doing. So to be recognised for something you love doing yeah. seems bonkers. Yeah, it feels in, like, in oh, an embarrassing. Itself. Like, oh God, A little really? bit like that. Yeah, yeah there, is, there is that sense of... I, I think the more I do it, the more I recognise how privileged I am to just be in the, the situation I'm in or be in the job that I'm in. Mm. And I think for nights like that, most importantly, you get to celebrate not what we do, but the work of likes yeah. of Nordorf Robbins. Exactly, and yeah. I've got a friend who's a music therapist who went through the programme, works in New York, uh, doing this work or did this work in a, in a hospital in Brooklyn. So I know the impact you can have on people's lives. So for me, that's far more profound than what we do. Mm. Listen, mm. I, I, I echo everything you say there. I forgot to mention as well, ADHD is also something yeah. that music therapy has a profound effect on and alleviating symptoms of as well, which I know you've spoken about previously as well. Yeah, listen, I'm, I've, I've got a guy who I work with who, he's adamant I'm, un, I'm undiagnosed ADHD. Mm. Um, whether I am or I'm not, I, I, I don't know. What I do know is that music has a calming influence on mm. me. And when my stress levels are in uh, different states, and it's not because of coaching, sometimes just my son screaming, <laughs> I'll put the ear pods in and it has such a calming effect on me. Well, let's, let's, let's go mm. back a bit. How much has music been a part of both of your lives from, from um, an early age? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always been, the radio was always on. So you heard all those, all the, all those songs. So when, you, when, you, when, a, when a certain song comes on the radio, or so, I, it would take me back to a place. 
You know what I mean? That's, that's how music is to me, you know, because I listen to lyrics. My mum used to be all about the lyrics in songs. So if you think of your mum when mm. you think of a song, what do you think of? Tina Turner, River Deep, Mountain High. Mm. It wasn't a good song for me. Um, wasn't, and especially when, I real, when you realise and watch what happened to Tina Turner. So the, the unhappiness of your so childhood. Yeah, and the thing is, yeah, so that's those kind of songs. And it's songs of that era, when you hear them, those are the ones that kind of take me to a place. I could be driving in the car and I hear a song because my mum used to listen to, my mum used to love all sorts of music. And uh, my mum would listen to a song and like she'd sit and she'd burst into tears and stuff. You know what I mean? I think I've got that from her because I'll be driving along in the car and then some, and something would come on and I would, I would start welling up because I think of my mum, whose story I don't really know, but she was obviously had a lot going on, but it's always about the lyrics. And so I listen to all the lyrics in songs and then that takes me to that place where, you know what I mean, I can kind of understand where she was, but then it makes me feel good about the lyrics of songs and what they can make me feel. And like Emma says there, she puts her AirPods in and she's fine. I can blast to a song that just takes me to another place, you know? It's funny you say the lyrics are the opposite. It's oh, the yeah? music. No, it's man. the... It's the beat. I've, it depends, because, I was, like I said to you before, when it comes to music, for me, it's profound in my life it isn't I can't comp compartmentalize it to one thing or another I grew up in a house of mum would listen to Patsy Klein crazy mm. always wings in my ears the Beatles for sure mm. and then on the other side Pink Floyd mm. used to dominate my dad's R Rolling Stones mm. uh, uh, Neil Diamond would always come into that and then be a generation I'm from the 80s so onwards from there of uh, at least in, in the house, music was always played, mm. more so than the television. I, I, like, the, I like the radio. The yeah, I like the radio because obviously a lot of ours was through, like a lot of reggae, obviously, to the point where I, I, was, I was afraid one time because I wanted to tell my brother, I'm kind of tired of reggae music. I want to hear, so and then I started to listen to soul music and mm. Mm. Philadelphia and Teddy Pendergrass and Barry White and that. And then obviously the lyrics in those songs oh. were about love and and all, this, all sorts well, of stuff in, like that. In, in those years as well, for a lot of people, music, certainly for me as yeah. well, you kind of find yourself, you find your personality through the music you mm. like, and it, you have a, if there's stuff going on in your own life, which is not what it should be, mm. music can be a sanctuary where you go yeah. to, it, it's your happy place. It can be uplifting for you. Especially Massively. You, yeah, yeah I, I, can have, I can have some time where I'll just, in the house and I'll just put, go, go to the playlist and just play five or six cool songs and, it, and, and, and listen to the lyrics of them and it just makes me feel good again. It's the way, it's the way to be honest, I got Nance, to be honest. Once she got, once she came to the flat and I put the tunes on, it was you over. Her. Oh, it's over. <laughs> what Killed did you put on? Teddy Pendergrass, Barry White, Luther Vandross. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, well, you can't fail. Nearly it's a home run finished, there. finished her off. <laughs> Jean Carr, <laughs> Jones on. Girls. <laughs> I didn't even have to do anything. It was done. <laughs> oh, I love that. Finished her. I was, at Nancy, I was the first person to play Teddy Pendergrass, love TKO to Nancy. I love that you're proud of that. I love that because <laughs> when she first heard it, when she played it, she said, play that again. I said, because Teddy Pendergrass's voice mm. is the greatest. No one's ever been, no one ever oh, gets wow. anywhere close to Teddy Pendergrass's voice. Wow. Obviously, Barry White's got a distinctive voice, Lufa, but Teddy Pendergrass's voice is the one that makes me, it, can, it will make me want to cry. It's like when I listen to Whitney Houston singing her yeah. stuff. I can burst, I can yeah. cry if Whitney, yeah. listening to Whitney Houston sing. It's a big part of your lives then, growing up. Still is. Mm. Dominates my own, my own time. I still listen to music as often as I possibly can. Like, and, how, and how much does it, like Ian, how much does it affect your mood? If you're, if you're not feeling great, or say you're going to training and you want to get upbeat, so you put on a good session, do you use music to motivate? I cannot have upbeat music in the car because I drive too fast. <laughs> and I, I'm aware of that. Mm. So for me, it's soothing in the car so that I can stay within a speed limit. Otherwise, I start putting my yeah. foot down. Do, and yeah. I, re I have realised that. But yesterday, I, had a, I came... Uh, I was coming back from the railway museum, as you do, <laughs> and I had a playlist on from K-Star from a Soul Weekend. Right. Uh, so I had uh, two Northern Soul. Some, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, listen, ska, reggae, mm. Northern Soul. That was yesterday, or at least uh, coming home from that. And then a couple of old Whitney classics. Mm. Right. Do you like to sing? Do you like to dance? 
Can you sing? Can you dance? Oh, that's so subjective. You know what I mean? Because I really think I can in this show. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I cannot. If you think you can, you I can. cannot sing to save my life, but I can do a really, really good vanilla ice, ice, ice baby rap. Nice. Go on then. Oh, come on. Come man. on, man. Are you kidding me? They're safe, oh, for, the, they're safe for the team karaoke <laughs> when we win the league. Oh, that ain't for here. Did it. No. <laughs> that ain't for here. That's for there. So you can do a decent rap? I can do a decent rap. Um, I'm a terrible singer and I love to dance. Yeah, but you weren't afraid to sing live on TV. Uh, just, yeah, I'm not very good at it. Yona Anderson? <laughs> You... <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that. No, listen, my sister, my younger sister was the singer in the household. She would be belting out tunes. I was just yeah, but you can the pretender you can in the there. corner. You, you're doing co-commentary and you burst into song. It was brilliant. Uh, you know, listen, I love it doing it. I you? love doing it, but there is, there, there is, there, uh, there's, there's no Whitney in me. <laughs> not, not so it's more, it's more Liam Gallagher, I think, when it's a bit, a bit too deep. Yeah. Right. Quick game now. Mm -hmm. mm. You need to give us a track for each of these situations. Oh. This is Emma and Wrighty's playlist. A song you'd put on first thing in the morning. Just fine, Mary J. Blige. Oh, you've picked a you want, corker there. That's, that's that, that finishes you off. You, you're, you're ready to go. That's a tune and a half. First thing in the morning. Mm. I mean, I don't put music no. on first thing in the morning. I've got to get a child to school <laughs> thinking about <laughs> music. Uh, you know what? Go, go on. You know what I would have liked? I would have gone even further back. I would have gone Michael Jackson, different kind of lady, way back. That's a tune. You lot don't know them tunes. I'm, I'm giving you, like, gold, bro. I, I'm wasting this. You... you you, you've been rehearsing at No, home, I've not. It's no, just no, that once it, comes, is... once it comes back, like, now... Because I listen to it all the time. What did I hear yesterday that I haven't heard in a while? Killing me softly. Oh, yeah. I haven't heard that in... I don't know why. I don't listen to the radio as much. Tune. Tune. You'll have that. I ain't heard okay. that for a while. Yeah. A song you'd put on in the car. Right, I'm going to go in terms of match days. Go on, then. Because when I go to the game, I want to oh, be true. perfectly so... This week, I put on... Oh, I had to listen to Gregory Porter. Wow. I had a little liquid, bit... Not of, Liquid Spirit, was no, it? No, I had... <laughs> no, I had Gregory Porter this week, because my mum and dad could handle it in the mm. car. Harry didn't... He was playing Roblox in the back, so mm. that was disrupt, distracting a little bit. And I, I will not lie, I have listened to Mary J's first album again because mm. I must have that on repeat. I have been since I was 15. Mm. Her okay. first album. What would I, um, in the car. In the car. You're on your own, in the car. Gene Khan, Don't Let It Go To Your Head. Um, because it's just old, classic, beautiful um, mm. melody. You know, and it's just, it makes you want to dance. It's, it's, the, it's the songs that, like I said, I told my brother I don't like reggae no more. I'm kind of going towards... Um, R&B and soul and that got my hair permed and um, he was it called um, he wasn't too happy with me but then I started to hear songs like Gene Khan stuff like that so that song there don't let it go to your head is one of my favorite songs ever pre-match in the changing room anything but ABBA when they play ABBA that sends me over the edge I, I, I've got a lot of Scandinavian players no to ABBA <laughs> do, you, do you let the players get yes. on with it? Do you, or do you ever say, hang on, I'm the coach, get that off? No, I'll add something to the playlist and it might be, I personally like, uh, you know, at least a little bit of dance music. Because it's always going to be quite eclectic. It'll be a bit of hip hop. It'll mm. be a bit of dance music. There's Euro pop. Don't, I, I've never felt that. Mm sort of music I'll, I'll that'll give that one a miss but it might be something i'll just might have worked out to that i'll put onto the playlist mm. but something uplifting it's got to, it's yeah, got to be fired it's got up to be. you know something there's a song that's just come to me it's funny because me and the girls are watching shrek forever after the other day and it came it's in the so that's what i love about the, the films now the animated films what they've got now they're using old school mm. songs mm. in sing mm. and in shrek and that and in shrek there was a, a sort of shake your groove thing 
Oh, brilliant. You can't. You, honestly, in the dressing room, you have to move to that. You know what they say? Old is gold. Old is gold, man. People realise the value. Shake your groove thing. Is there, is there a song that you particularly associate, either, you, either of you, with a, a particular success in your footballing life? Either, oh, I remember when we won the title, we played this, or when No, but I've got one where the, my, Michael Jackson's Thriller album is like, I was playing, a f I was getting ready, me and my mate Conrad, who, who passed away not too long ago, we bought the, um, we actually bought the Thriller album, 83, we kind of shared it, and we had the tape as well, so we was going to, the, we was going to my first football final against Longwall, and we beat them, we beat them 4-1, I scored a trick in it, and um, it was the Michael Jackson Thriller album. We was playing it all the way, we'd playing it all the time. That one, I never forget that because obviously he passed away a few years ago. And that for me, any time I hear any song off of that Michael album, that, that album, it's, um, it kind of makes me feel unbelievable. It's brilliant. The team ones, I think they're probably quite generic. Mm. Like we are the champions always will come up from, the one my team plays, I've, the staff are always a little bit like, what's this one, the country road? Uh, Take, Take me, me home. home. It's they a great look, song. I they, love that song. They, they, it's become uh, a bit of a thing in our team, that song. Yeah, country road. Right, here you go then. Song to get ready for a night out. Well, the last time I went out, the last album I put on was Chase and Status, No Idols album. Let me tell you, Going to see Chase and Status allows me to be 15, <laughs> 16, get pushed around, get thrown around, <laughs> love it, until someone says, is that the Chelsea manager? <laughs> <laughs> you had to ruin it, didn't you? And I'm up at Ali Pally. That was the last album I listened to to get myself up for a night out. You know something? It depends on what I'm going out for. Like, for instance, the other day I was um, going to golf and I've been playing pretty bad golf. And I just wanted to get pumped up, yeah. and I put on Firestarter, Keith Flint. Oh, listen, what a classic! I was classic. just like, by the time I got to the golf course, I was just like, what a I classic! Could, I, I could have, I could have eaten bricks. <laughs> I was like, ah! <laughs> I used to have that one when I used to go to the games, Ems. Firestarter. So I used to start my trip because I used to come all the way from South London to to Highbury. So I'd start the trip with something yeah. nice and classical, yeah. a classical song. That would be you know? your last one. And then the, just as you get to, when you're getting down there towards turn down Avonall Road, where you see all the, mm. all the, all the crowd, like, I'd, I'd, I'd put on, I'd oh, just put on great. Firestar. It was like, I was, I was, I was blasting, bro. I was pumped. Oh, God, yeah. Amazing. Your go-to karaoke song. Oh, I mean, I gave part of that away before, but Drew Spence made me sing Stand By Me at the last time we won a title, which actually, I'd, I was, I did okay. She helped me a little bit, to mm. be fair, because I didn't quite enjoy it. She picked it for me. Um, that was my life. I'm, I'm not great at karaoke. No. You know when you were talking about get going up on stage at these awards? That's how yeah. I feel about karaoke. Oh, gosh. When I sit with the team, I'm thinking, it's my turn next. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to go, the palms are sweaty, the, you know. Bit more oh. water to hydrate. And you know, that peer group pressure moment yeah. is a killer. With karaoke. Wow. Well, um, you know what? I'd probably I'd do a loo for something, something to Nance or something like that because then I don't have to worry about how I'm singing it because I'm singing it to her. So she mm. knows I'm probably si I'm singing it to her. I was going to say she knows I'm probably singing it to her. She knows I'm singing it to <laughs> her. So I'm not bothered about the tone of it. I'm just singing the words because I know what that song means to both of us. I mean, the whole thing about football music, somebody asked me a while ago, which I think... It's a ridiculous question which you can't answer, but perhaps puts into perspective how we feel about music. Mm. Somebody said, if I gave you a choice, you could never watch a game of football again or never listen to music again, what would you choose? It's, is, it's such an horrendous... Is it, this some kind of crazy <laughs> test or something? No, no, I'm not, it's not a question what I'm saying to you. It just it makes you realise how important yeah. music is God, yeah. in your yeah. life. I but, don't think I could do without any of those two in no, my life. I, I no, I agree. And the thing, so I, w I wouldn't be able to pick football and I wouldn't be able to pick music because I, I need both of those two in, in, in equal measure, man. And it fills your head. Like, even mm. as you're asking these questions, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking... <laughs> I missed that one. Or I should where do you yeah. begin? Because yeah. it's mood, mm. it's, it's timing, it's the, 
the decade mm. because I'm sure we could sit here and say, I think about my childhood and I'm like, well, I'd go to Camden Palace mm. for dance music. I'd go up to the underworld for a bit of punk. I'd mm. go to the electric ballroom for 80s. I'd go to the mango rooms for reggae and ska. <laughs> I'd go up to Dingwalls for, well, I'd hopefully to make it home at some point <laughs> that night. But for me, it, the, the beauty, if you are a massive fan of music, is that tapping into the right one at the right time. Yeah, and that's why when, you know, when you, when you, you do, when all of a sudden the right one comes along, because you say you don't listen to the radio much now, but when you, when you just hear the right song at the right time, it's like, it's like, remember, do you remember Tom Hanks in the film, um, Jerry Maguire, when he's riding along and he's trying to find the right song and then, that song came on. Do you know what? You, you know. are right. You are right. And then bam, it came on. It was the right song. Yeah, you, know you I mean? are right. Cause I'm free. Yeah. And then it was the right song at the right moment. I've had those moments, and it's fantastic. And you different radio yeah. stations, depending on that, like you can have a a history moment, a kiss yeah. moment, yeah. a smooth moment, a my soul moment, a my soul my moment. Soul, yeah. But I actually didn't got digital radio anymore in my car, and I think that's why I don't listen You're to radio out. as much. I'm, I'm into podcasts now. It's, it's a long know, drive. I know, that's the it's thing, yeah, drive. me too. Long drive. Yeah. If you could have had, if you could imagine what they were like as a person, is there a, a musician that you would have liked in your team? <laughs> oh, definitely James Brown. <laughs> <laughs> De definitely. Where, where, are you where are you playing him? Are you really ready for some super dance? Yeah. So I want to be ready for that. You've got to play him anywhere he wants. He goes where he wants. He's he would have been everywhere. His feet would have been all over the place. He would have been Messi, <laughs> Ronaldo, <laughs> Kelly Smith. Wow. Uh, all at once. James, uh, let's pick an 11. We could have picked an well, 11. The, yeah. can, can you pick an 11? Have you got an 11 between well, you? Well, wow. we we've got to pick thinkers in here. We've yeah. got to pick lively. You got, you know, it's so that means Lionel, Lionel Rich is going to be a holding midfielder because he's got this, he's, he writes well, well, let's, great let's songs. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a... uh, who's, who's the keeper? <sighs> you know, I'd like to be oh, in goal. Uh, you know, I put in goal. I put Elvis in goal. Because... <laughs> Do you know what? I like Elvis, the idea that you... I put you're... Elvis in goal because then he could just like, he'd, he'd just be <laughs> all the stuff when he's just like in the goal on his own. <laughs> you don't want him on the pitch, do you? But in the goal, he can do his stuff, practice his stuff on the side, can't he? You know what I mean? So you probably have Elvis I in I keep goal. going for feet all the time. I'm just looking at moves, not always just music. Prince then. Prince, where'd you I put... think Prince could go. I think MJ will have to go in oh, there. Of course. Can yeah. we have Prince, can't... At, Prince at right back yeah. or something? I'm not sure how you, you determine have a that Prince Hang on goes. A you got to have, you, there's got to be a general in there and a reefer has to go in there. A reefer, so, someone has to be... So a reefer's our holding midfield. Yeah, yeah. Someone's got to yeah. be the vocal leader. Beyonce up front. Oh my goodness, it would be Beyonce, man. Right. Be dynamic. Okay, you know what? We've got keeper, we've got right side, we've got holder, we've got up top. Whitney Houston left wing. Yeah, Whitney's who's who's going in there. Halves? We need half. imposing figures as centre half. Barry White. Wow, he's gone Barry for White. it. Barry White. I'd go Barry he's White gone for it. or Teddy Pendergrass at the back because they're both two big, for, he's very gone for it. power he's powers. He's gone for it. Someone from the Smiths has got to be in wow. there. Can we just put them in as bands? Like one position one is a ton of bands. bands. Mm -hmm. So we can put in that, we'll put the Smiths in it. I think you've got to put the Stone Roses in there. Mm -hmm. You've got Elvis. You've got to put Oasis in there. Teddy and Barry, Oasis. Didn't do Blur. But you've got Beyonce, you've got Beyonce. Elvis. You've got Aretha Holders. I, I don't yeah. think you can, you can't, you can't ignore Madness. You can't ignore them. You can't ignore You absolutely madness. can't ignore madness. And Bob Marley has to have some kind yeah, of Yeah, that's it's, it's valid. Decent player. Yeah. But if you want more another than, big... Player. More than decent it, player. You know, you can, you can pick Whitney, but can you really ignore Adele? It's impossible. Wow. It's impossible. It is. You know what it's like? It's like trying to put the greatest football 11 together. And you yeah. know what I mean? That will never... It's so subjective. It's the same with music. Who's the greatest? I don't think you need to. They're all great. Just listening to you two then, I think it might be harder to do music than football. I think we could be here for quite a while yeah. because I'd have to break it down in genres. So mm. we'd have to say, pick a genre per position, then pick a best of in that genre. See how she's gone to manager head now. Look. Yeah. <laughs> then decades. You have to think about decades because you, you can't sit there and say, all right, we'll mm. pick a James Brown, but not a Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. You can't then go... Damn. 
What about The Clash? You can't pick something without... You've got to pick The Clash. Jeez, I was only Come hearing on. that the other day. The, 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 what? Um, London Hendrix. Calling album. Jimi wow. Hendrix. What was I listening to yesterday? Curtis Mayfield. Jesus, Quality album. Curtis, what a voice. Superfly, what an album. If you listen to The Clash, you mm. then go straight away to Big Old Dio Dynamite. It's impossible not to go across. You, you, you can't. You, you know, and that's... I think both of us will both agree there might be a ton of influences. I just know I'm quite clear on what I don't like, and Euro mm. pop is definitely yeah. something I s struggle to listen to. You know, just out of pure respect, I've got to mention Tupac, and, and I've got to mention um, I've got to mention Tupac Shakur, Ice Cube, and W. Just have to mention them yeah, because nineties. How have we even missed that? Jesus Christ, that's what I'm saying. You're just like, no, <laughs> how just like, have we even you can feel them that? saying, yo, yo, yo. What about what about You've us? You got boys man? to men that you boys could throw in there. Bell you got Biv Bell Biv Devoe. Look, it's tough. Legends of Football Awards are not until October the second. We'll we've got time. We'll give you. We'll give you the time. Are you? What we got to do this again? No, no. Oh. You haven't got to do anything else. Purely for fun. Between now and then, do you reckon individually you could pick? A playlist, just eleven tracks. We'll do eleven. All right, yeah. I'll do it. What yeah. that mean you, the most to us? You've got to do. You've got to do one. Yeah, a little tag. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Your playlist. Yeah. One, two, eleven. Wow. But, but when you look back though, as well, you can see that there's this rich and glorious history. Football has always been involved with music, and mm. music has always been involved in football as well. Mm. All it's always been. They've always been together. Would you agree? They've always without had, a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's yeah. always been a relationship. The there. Yeah, the, it's there because, like, like you you mentioned one or the other. You can't have one without the other. To be honest, it's, as a footballer, because you need music, and musicians need football. They, yeah. you know, what I mean, they probably most of them would have probably wanted to play football or, you know, they, and that's that's why they love it so much, and that's why when you get together, there's so much, you know, there's there's so much respect and love yeah. because you. you, you but I even just as music. a fan, yeah. when you're on yeah. the terraces, you get used to the pre-game mm. songs, the half-time songs. You know, there's good rituals and traditions that come with... You, you, we, we found as well, you find as well, exactly to your point, a lot of musicians wish they'd been footballers. Yeah. A lot of footballers wish they'd been musicians yeah. as well. Yeah. Glenn Oddle and Chris Waddle, yeah. yeah. Pet, <laughs> pet a check. When Pet I was at Chelsea, check. unbelievable drummer. Is he? Unbelievable like Glenn drummer. Elder, a, 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 unbelievable drummer. Unbelievable. I've All, got players on the team that are musicians as Honestly, well. Honestly, Glenn Elder yeah. could go and so he'll play the guitar, he'll play the drums, he'll play, tr he'll play a trumpet, play everything. We well, don't know who can have musically on the night as mm. yet. We've had lots of different artists over the years. Um, we might put together a little band of former players or current players as well. Wow. As our house band. Well, Seriously? Petr Cech will play the drums. That yeah. I, I can vouch for. He, I've seen him play them. He's unbelievable. So now you know a little bit more about it. Yes. It's a celebration of your, your own fabulous careers, but we're going to celebrate your careers oh. with music. Oof. Does that sound up your street? Yeah, it's sounds, quite exciting. Sounds perfect. You know? it sounds like I'm so pleased I'm not doing it on my own. I'm so pleased it ends with me. I yeah, wouldn't likewise. want to sit there and be on my own doing something like that. I did smile when your name popped up when yeah. I was like, so, perfect. We're gonna and have a great you heard Emma's going to say, I'm definitely yeah. coming. <laughs> if it was yeah. just you, it was yeah, maybe. So yeah, go on, have a good night. But like Emma and Emma and yeah. Becky and her mum. Yeah. Is your mum coming and all? They'll all come. Honestly, They'll be honestly. loving it. All your family will be there, all your friends. Yeah, they'll all be there. Former teammates, um, yeah, current great. team, whoever you want there, they will be there. We're going to have a party. Simple as that. And hopefully we're going to raise plenty of money so mm. that people who don't just enjoy music but need music mm. for therapy will benefit from a celebration of your careers. Thank you. We're, we're hum I'm humbled. I know. Yeah. We're, we're humbled really. By that. We're honoured. Yeah. So you, so you should be, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs>